I'm telling you, if there was no more Korean food in South Korea, I bet all the people there would move to LA just so that they can eat this exact replica. Los Angeles is the place outside of Korea to eat the best Korean food on earth. You'll find everything from homestyle Korean food to all you can eat Korean barbecue in this city. Have you tried any of them? Hey there, this is Steve from Rockstar Eater, and in this episode, I'm gonna be taking you on an epic 200 hour journey into the Korean food scene in Los Angeles. In this full documentary, you'll see all the best Korean restaurants to eat at, every kind of Korean food experience, all in one video. So get ready for a whopping viewing experience because this is gonna be the biggest Korean food tour in Los Angeles episode you're gonna find anywhere on YouTube. And also, if you're new to this channel, please take a moment to hit that subscribe button as well as that notification bell because I post these food and travel videos weekly you don't want to miss out on. So go ahead, do that right now. And with that being said, let's go to our first Korean spot. The food tour begins with Butnao, which is a fairly new pub in Koreatown that specializes in street style foods, much like the ones you'll find all over Seoul, Korea. This is already one of the highest rated Korean restaurants in Koreatown. So if you are looking for a fun dinner spot, then this is a Korean pub that should make it on your list. They do have quite a lot of stuff on the menu, but I think this kind of makes it a little easier. They tell you what is the signature foods here, like the assorted savory pancake, spicy braised chicken, bosom, army stew. All of these I recognize, they're very solid choices. But then if you want to do something like one of these combos, they have different foods of different prices. And I would say this is really good, especially if you're coming with a group. Yeah, all of you can share all this magnificent Korean food. It's a pretty tight kitchen back here, but they whip up a lot of food. So don't think that this is one of those bars where it's all about the drinks and the food is kind of like mediocre snacks. This looks like really quality food, like it could have come out of a master chef's kitchen. Going all out with my Korean food experience here. It looks all so magnificent. This one, obviously, is the kimchi fried rice. Look at how much rice there is in this dish. There's, uh, I see some seaweed, as well as that egg on top, sesame seeds, even a piece of spam. This dish looks fabulous. This is called the pork belly and kimchi. Very self-explanatory. The pork belly has been um, wok stirred so it is supposed to be kind of crispy, and then the, that's the kimchi that you're supposed to pair along with this food. Always makes for a good combination. And this is one of their best sellers. This is the assorted savory pancake. It's the large size. They do have a small size too, but I'm going all out with this. And there's quite a bit of selections on here. I see some zucchini, I see some meatballs, I see spam, I see... Um, some peppers in here, as well as the imitation crab meat, all good stuff. Seeing this assorted platter, you got both the veggies as well as the meat one. See, this one is the one that's exclusively like a, a meatball. Totally needed. Now it's like, woo! If you've never had a jun before, like an assorted platter, you should get it. It's like, Really, one of the best Korean foods. And usually when people eat jeon, especially if they are into alcoholic beverages, they get something called the makgeolli, which is rice wine mixed with Sprite or 7-Up. So it's supposed to have like a carbonated rice wine flavor, which sounds good. I mean, I like sweet stuff. Refreshing. And you can always make it sweeter by putting more of that Sprite inside. This assorted pancake platter really can be its own meal. I mean, there's a, like a lot of food on it. This is like such good comfort food. And they do have white rice on the side, so be sure to get it, especially with all the saucier dishes. I think it's really going to complement everything so well. Ramen and dokboki. So you're supposed to mix it just like that. Yeah, I see the fish cake, the egg, the rice cake, the ramen. I don't remember when was the last time I had ramen dokboki, but that is definitely good. These rice cakes, dokboki is very good too. What can I say? This is like a very Korean food. 
So like I said, a lot of this is Korean pub food. So if you were to travel to major cities like Seoul, you will find a lot of restaurants like this serving very similar dishes. And then a lot of these are also street foods too. So yes, I've seen it in Korea too. You'll definitely find these on the streets of Korea. Kimchi fried rice. I'm so happy. This is totally my day today. Oh, <laughs> that really touches my soul right there. Wow. That kimchi fried rice is so perfectly made. Everything about it, like the rice, the bits of kimchi, and then it does come with the egg as well, which you can make it kind of jammy by spreading the yolk around, you know what I'm saying? Wow, it's perfect. Perfect, perfect. You see, there's even a piece of spam up there as well. Wow, I'm so happy. So yes, even their fried rice is so good here. You have to get this here. This is the real deal. So you got the seaweed, rice, spam, egg. It's so complete, like a perfect kimchi fried rice. Even in Korean barbecue restaurants, you grill the pork and even grill the kimchi, you're gonna get an awesome food right there. That pork is smoky, crispy, uh, kind of fatty as well. I don't know why, but beef and kimchi doesn't seem to quite work as much as kimchi and pork. When you have kimchi and pork together, whether it's in a dish like this one or in a Korean barbecue restaurant, it's one of the best things ever. You should get this one. And some of these dishes do come on top of these portable gas stoves. This is the spicy braised chicken. It's a pretty epic dish, very big. And you can get it mild or you can get it very spicy. So of course there's chicken in there. And then I also see big chunks of potato as well as a lot of green onions. And I think there's also rice cakes in there too. Since it's on a gas stove, it can keep it very warm, but I would suggest don't keep it there way too long because you don't want the soup to evaporate. Ooh, it's hot. Hot but tender. That is a nice juicy piece of chicken leg right there. It's so moist. See, we even got the potato in here that's like falling apart. It's so delicate. Whoa. That is like comfort food, soul food, Korean soul food right there. Everything that's good about Korean food, even in Korean pubs, if you've got the right recipe, the right chef, you're gonna get some really spectacular five-star food. Now here's the other one on the gas stove. It's the Korean army stew. In Korean, it's called bude chige. It's supposed to have a mixture of a lot of things inside. Like you got the ramen, some tofu, and I think there might be spam or sausages inside, green onions. So you scoop out your individual portion just like that. Get a little bit of everything like tofu, noodles, spam. Tofu is really good, very soft. Oh yeah. And don't forget your ramen noodles too. Ooh, this is like one of those foods that could really make you feel good on such a cold day. Even though the Korean army stew is something that was more like a poor man's food back during the Korean War era, it's one of the must try items when you go to Korean restaurants, especially when you go to a Korean pub. It's not cheap because they fill it with a lot of meats, veggies and noodles and a lot of soup, but it's totally a communal food, which means that you should eat it if you have more than one person here. As you can see, this is a restaurant that you should come to with a group because the more the merrier, you're gonna enjoy a lot of this amazing foods, which comes in big portions. And I think this is pretty cool. So when you dine in, you get free ice cream with your meal. Complimentary ice cream bar. Melon ice cream bar sounds good. If you guys only end up going to one Korean restaurant in Los Angeles or Koreatown, then this spot is definitely worthy. I mean, the food here is fantastic. Everything from the assorted pancakes to the braised chicken. They really got their recipe town. Tastes almost like something out of Korea. So yes, come on by here. It opens for dinner time. It even goes late night. So if you are into late night spots where you can get good food and good drinks, then 
you're gonna have a pretty rockin' time here. And remember, complimentary ice cream. And right across the street is another must-try restaurant called Soban. This is a critically acclaimed Korean restaurant serving many classic Korean dishes, including their famous raw marinated crab and amazing banchan spread. It's kind of on the pricier side, but if you are looking for premium taste and quality, then Soban certainly delivers on just about every level. This is my dad. He does most of the back of house stuff, does most of the cooking, and my mom does a lot of the hanchan, but she came up with all the recipes. All right, so is he responsible for all the magic in this restaurant? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a team effort, but a lot of it comes from here. This is a braised black cod, one of our signature dishes. Oh, yeah, so in Korean it's uh, undegu, right? Yeah, undegu chorim. Chorim means braised. Got it. This is the altan, so that's going to be the egg stew. So egg lots stew. of different fish row, uh, other seafood, uh -huh. little bits of shrimp and clam. Um, but yeah, lots of row in that one. It's a little spicy, pretty traditional to like end your dish with like a spicy fish soup. You know how there are certain chefs that really have like that chef's touch where when they cook the food, it really comes out quite spectacular. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think your dad has that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to learn slowly. The more I'm in the kitchen, I'm getting a little bit better, but I definitely don't have the last, like the finesse quite yet. I wanted to ask you, do you yeah. actually cook these dishes too? I do. Yeah? <laughs> I do. And this is Jennifer. She's the owner at uh, Soban <laughs> Restaurant. Okay, making the, I think it's the pancake. Whether it's lunch or dinner, it gets super busy out there. There's already a lot of customers coming in right when this yeah. restaurant opened. And yeah, it might take some time for your food to come out, but you're gonna see it's worth it. This is something you see when you come into the restaurant. So what exactly is this? There are different types of ferments. Uh, some of them are like eight years old at home. I know she has some that are like over 10 years old, but they really range some of them from like ginger, ginseng, to pomegranates, blackberries. Uh, whenever something's in season, um, we basically just make as much as we can and we'll have them for you know years to enjoy. And they're really used to marinate the food um, as well as uh, they're on the panchan as well. Generally at a table, there's around a dozen, but we have anywhere from like 15 to 20 every morning. Uh, this is one of my favorites to try cuttlefish. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, these are like little skewers with, uh, with imitation crabs, some mushroom, zucchini, um, and... Wow, it almost looks yeah. like street food. Yeah, so <laughs> braised tofu. Tofu, okay. Yeah, that one's fun. This one, you gotta get like a little boomerang action going. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is an acorn jelly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. And all these panchan, did you say that they're all house made here? Yeah, my mom makes all the panchan every morning. Well, except for like the pickled things, but yeah, we make it every morning. See, we got a lot of food here. So this is pretty much all their specialties at Soban restaurant. So Debbie, what do we got here? Uh, that is a monkfish stew. So that would be a agutang. Uh, so a little spicy mussels, shrimp. Uh, there's some roe and monkfish in there. It's really good. Oh yeah, it looks good. And uh, this that's, one I've had before. Yeah, that's a hemor chubujang, so the seafood tofu pancake. Uh, tofu and lots of different uh, seafood in there. Yep, I've had this one too. Oh, and this one. Uh, one of my favorites, the braised black cod. There's daikon radish, potatoes, rice cakes, kabocha squash, of course the cod, some onions. There's a lot of stuff in there that was really good. Yep, my favorite too. <laughs> and this one is obviously a show stealer. Of course, uh, so that's a kanjang gejang, so soy marinated raw crab. Uh, around 20 items just go into the, the broth and the marinade itself. And then this is a, like a... The spicy octopus, so that's a nakjibokum. Uh, we saw him making it in the kitchen earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, super hot, really quick. Um, but yeah, that one's one of my favorites as well. Uh, this is a meun kalbichim, so a spicy uh, braised short rib. Uh, one of our specialties, and this one comes on, um, you know, we try to do the center cuts, bone in, try to use the nicest meat we can. And uh, the rice cakes, shiitake mushrooms, the carrots, <laughs> some of my favorites. Yes, and this one I think I'm trying for the first time. Yeah, here. of course. So that's a cheyuk pokum. Um, so that's uh, basically a pork bulgogi with kimchi. So that's the thing about Korean food, right? There's like no wrong way, there's no right order to yeah. eat anything. You just 
if you like it, go for it. Seriously. So, uh, so what do you think, uh, what, like start with the uh, side dishes, banchan? Um, yeah, I mean, definitely you can. We can start with like some interesting ones like the lotus. You can definitely taste like the ginger in there. I noticed that right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Very gingery and I, I mean, it does have quite a bite to it. Right? Mm hmm Interesting. This one's always fun. This one, the... Uh, the jelly. Jelly. It's made out of... Uh, is acorns. it acorn? Okay. Yeah. Totorimuk. I always love that. That thing melts in your mouth. Right? Mm hmm Now, you know, one of the great things I love about Soban is that you guys put so much emphasis on your side dishes, the banchan, because it seems like a lot of Korean restaurants these days are kind of shrinking back on that yeah, compared to like the 1980s. <laughs> but I can tell how good a Korean restaurant is by the care that they put into their side dishes. Of course, yeah. My mom comes in every morning. She makes all the banchan. It's really special. Mm. And you said like this, these peanuts are uh, like a chef's specialty, you said? Yeah, definitely inspiration because um, my dad, he lived in China for quite a bit and was a chef there, mm -hmm. like all throughout. Uh, China, so this is a roasted, like salted peanut with anchovies. But he started making it, and people really loved it. And they kept asking for it, so now it's kind of like a staple panchan. Oh, I like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, that's like a anchovy flavored peanut. Yeah. Mm hmm. It works. It does. It's good. Right. Uh huh. This is their famous carby gym, so this is one of your best sellers here, obviously. Yeah, right? absolutely. Uh, we really try to focus on the meat quality. We just get the center uh, cut parts of the short rib. Um, we braise it twice. It's really delicious. Yes, I've had it before. It's really good. So this is um, more of like a traditional way of making the carby gym, because I know these days, you've seen it, like where they put all that cheese and they flame it oh, on top. Oh, yeah, of course. You yeah. Know, there's a time and a place for both. And that definitely, you know, at two in the morning, something like that, you okay. know, maybe you want a little bit more cheese, but yeah, this is definitely a little bit more classic, traditional. Mmm. Right. The uh, beef is, um, it's, it's tender and it's kind of sweet and spicy at the same time. It's really one of the best uh, dishes in Korean cuisine. You have to try it. And it has a lot of things, like she said, there's like carrots and there's Oh the yeah, the rice cake. Rice duck. cake. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, your duck kind of has a bite to it. Mm -hmm. you, you gotta kind of take a little work of chewing into it. It's like exercising my teeth. <laughs> you said it was an uh, octopus, or yeah, this one's octopus. We also okay. have squid. Squid. Okay, octopus and squid. Mm -hmm. Tender and the uh, chewiness is really on point. And I love the sauce too. That sauce. Oh, oh, oh yeah, it's perfectly made. Yum. Now I feel like dishes like this is so good with rice. Yum. Mmm. Just the sauce and the rice. You add a little bit of the sesame oil on top. It's perfect. Oh yeah. See, she knows what she's talking about. This is one of those dishes that I loved eating, uh, especially when I was in high school. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, but uh, I didn't eat it that often, but I remember the first time I had it, it was not here, but it was at another restaurant. I was like, wow, this is really like one of the best fish dishes ever. <laughs> yeah, let's eat it. Yeah. Mmm. Okay. See, the uh, fish is so soft that it really is like butter. It melts in your mouth, but I would say with this fish, what really enhances the flavors if you put a lot of the sauce on it. You know, like, brings out so much of that amazing flavor in this dish. Oh yeah. And guys, once again, it's not spicy. Mm -mm. It's not. It, it looks spicy, it looks dreadfully spicy, but it's, it's really not. I would say it's a little bit more like on the sweet side, I would say. Yeah. Oh, good stuff. Spicy pork, is that what you said? Yeah, spicy pork. Um, we have one with kimchi and without. It's pretty mild. Uh-huh. Um, I feel that kimchi and pork is always a good combination. Like, especially if you go to Korean barbecue restaurants, mm -hmm. I always like grilling them together. But what I think of that's unique about this one is that 
It's a little bit sweet, so it almost kind of has like a bulgogi flavor, mm -hmm. but then with the spiciness of the kimchi inside. This is their uh, seafood, did you say seafood potato? It's, to it's tofu. Oh, tofu. Yeah, so it's hemur and tubuchan. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay. Yep, communal sauce right there. Yeah. All right. That sauce is... That sauce is really good. Right? Yeah. It has so much flavor. You know, I'm gonna put a little bit of the cod sauce. Oh, Go seriously? Wow. <laughs> okay. I guess you can put whatever sauce you want on top of it, but she's saying the cod sauce works, so maybe she'll order the fish just so you can put it over these pancakes. So I guess it's soup time and uh, you know, it was really hot when we first started. So I think it should be okay yeah. right now. Ooh, okay. I don't remember, did I have this one here last time? No, I'm not sure. Maybe the fish roll, but maybe not. Okay. But this is like a very traditional way to like end a seafood meal, right? With some sort of like seafood, like tongue of some sort, yeah. like the fish roll or this one. Very a light, soothing flavor, I would say. We can do it like without spice as well, it's called a chidi, so it's like a white soup, but I like the original. This right here is uh, the late critic Jonathan Gold's, uh, one of his favorite crab dishes in LA. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure a lot of other customers said that too, right? <laughs> I got to admit, when I was growing up, I thought eating raw crabs was very intimidating. Mm -hmm. But it's something I really began to appreciate more, especially uh, as I became a foodie. The only other time I've had probably raw crab is like when it comes to like, like the Thai or like Cambodian mm -hmm. type dishes. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, this this crab is. It's so soft. Yeah, absolutely. Very soft. It's it just melts in your mouth, and it's it, it's it's sweet. It tastes so fresh. And I heard you use really high quality crabs here. Huh? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so are you going to put this over rice? Is that how it works? I actually mix it into the shell. Oh, okay. So I use it as a bowl. I feel like there's a natural bowl. Yeah. You should use it. I can already tell this is going to be so delicious. <laughs> Just a little extra ocean umami in here. Is it good? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, I trust you. I'm sold. <laughs> Seriously, that's like the... I think that's the best thing I've tasted so far today. It's really, really good. It is mind blowing. Good job. You, you, yeah, you should be the head chef here, seriously. <laughs> so definitely get the raw marinated crab when you're here because this is really what this restaurant is known for. One of the best crab dishes in town. Um, but pretty much everything that we got here are their specialties here at this restaurant. So it just kind of depends on, you know, what you're in the mood for. So yeah, when you're here in Koreatown and you're looking for that really authentic, traditional Korean food. One that's endorsed by so many critics, audiences, and yes, even Mark Weens himself. <laughs> then this is the restaurant you gotta be at. The adventure continues with another hot spot, Yangji Gamjatang, which serves old school Korean comfort food, including their famous Garbi Jim and Gamjatang Pot. This is one of my favorite Korean restaurants in Koreatown for Korean comfort food. So if that's the kind of food you are down for, then Yangji is a place that you should eat at, whether by yourself or with a small group. All right guys, so this is Chris. He's the owner here at Yangji. So he's gonna explain to us how they make all this awesome stuff. All right, so to start off, uh, this is our base for the kalbi tang. Uh, we take about at least five to six hours to boil this up. We put an assortment of vegetables, mainly onions, green onions, and we use the, the best bones that we can find. Over here, we have the Songtang base. Uh, we put in ox bones and brisket, and we just sit there for hours and hours on end. And I will have to say, this is the most important soup that we have in our kitchen. Uh, step one, we boil the brisket and the ox bones. And from that, you get to the second pot. After we remove the meat and the bones, you get this soup. It's very milky, and this is where we separate the fat 
from the actual broth. And the last third step is uh, you end up with a milky foam broth. Wow, that looks so milky. Okay, so this is what's served to the customers, to us, right? Yes. Next, this is our yukijang base. So we don't just use it for yukijang, we also use it for tteokbokki and uh, other hot pots as well. But I would say that these are the main three. And then with this uh, comes our kamjatan, which is our main dish. It's a pork neck bone soup. Uh, we let it sit here for at least 10 hours, slow cook it. We put in potatoes as well. And of course you can't forget the main part, our pork Ooh, neck. I see it. So it's very nice and tender. We put a lot of care and effort into our food to serve you guys. And you know, we only want the best experience for you guys. And like I said, this is really one of the top Korean restaurants that you can find in Koreatown. Korean barbecue is not all there is to Korean Absolutely. cuisine. Absolutely, you know what? That's one of my biggest pet peeves. It's like Korean food, there's so many Korean foods. Mm -hmm. And this is one of them right over here. And what is this one? This is tteokbokki and then they added a little American twist. They put cheese on it and tteokbokki and cheese is such a good combination. And it's a popular street food in Korea. Oh yeah, you'll find them in little cups. They'll sell them for, you know, a couple bucks and you just eat it with a little toothpick. It's great. All right. Well, shall we dig in? Absolutely. Okay. This is a utensil drawer. This is exactly how they always have it in Korea, on the side, in a drawer that pops out just because there isn't much space in Korea. Wow, that's cool. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> that's really good. Spicy. <laughs> you have to kind of be careful. Wow. Oh, but I know you want some of that cheese, right? <laughs> wow, this is crazy. Mm. Mm. The sauce is great. This is the first time I've actually ate tteokbokki here at this restaurant. I love the little touch of the seaweed on top. It adds a really nice flavor to it. You're talking about this one right here? Yeah. Most mm -hmm. places don't really sprinkle that seaweed on there, but it really added a nice flavor to it. All right, so the next two came out. I'm gonna let Esther explain this since she's Korean too. What is this? So that's yukijang. It's a shredded beef soup. It's spicy, it's super hearty. There's a lot of vegetables in there and it's really delicious. This is kalbitang. It's a short rib soup. It's got short ribs in there, as you can see on the top. It's got eggs. Sometimes there's noodles in there and it's just a really hearty, beefy dish. Yes, and I can tell it's steaming hot. Oh, absolutely. Koreans love to have their soups hot and they just come out boiling. To get the perfect bite, you gotta get a little bit of noodle and a little bit of meat and a little bit of everything in there, but you gotta try that broth first. Mmm. Wow. That is good. That is delicious. I'm thinking the same exact thing about mine too. Is it spicy? It is actually. Yeah? Mm-hmm. That's yeah. good. I like spicy. I don't know about you, but I think yukijang is one of the most comforting Korean foods. Oh, absolutely. Every time I go home, my mom loves to make that for me. Oh, too bad my mom never made this for me. <laughs> <laughs> so once again, yukijang is like a beef bone broth that has like a spicy paste, which they house make here. So very home style. There are big pieces of karbi and it's Ooh. pretty much short ribs. It is short rib, yes. Mmm. Oh, okay. The just fell off. It's so tender. <laughs> Not too hot now, right? Not anymore, yeah. I cooled it down. Make sure you cool it down. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. You know, I want to try some of this right here. <laughs> I'm going to get me some. It's hot. Mmm. Good, huh? So good. So good. This is also another classic Korean soup dish. Oh, yeah. Every time I go to Korea, this is one of my favorite things to just, just eat because it's so hearty. You know, I'm, I'm so picky about this because my mom makes it so good, but this is definitely one of the better ones that I've had. Honestly, most restaurants that serve yukijang really skimp out on the stuff inside. Look, the entire soup is just chock full of stuff. And a lot of people skimp out on this, which is fern. And this is one of my favorite vegetables. It's so tasty because it is a little bit more expensive. A lot of places don't even have it. So they have so much of it in here. This is so good. I, I you know, I've, I've tried their other soup here, which is also really good, but never had this because I'm usually disappointed by it, but this is, this is delicious. <laughs> yeah. 
So this one is the Carby Gym. So Esther, what is this essentially? So it's essentially short ribs that are braised in a long time in a nice spicy sauce. And this again with this new cheese stuff, it's super trendy and it's such a good combination. And I see that there are potatoes and carrots in there. Potatoes and carrots, yep. Okay, a little bit healthier, I guess. <laughs> Wow, you can really feel the flames, huh, Esther? Thought I almost lost my eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, careful there. This comes with your meal, so when you Ooh. get this, whoa. Ooh, that's the first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it looks like it kind of caught on fire there. Yeah, and you know the cool thing about this one is that this restaurant, you can actually have the mix of the oxtail in it too. Really? Mm -hmm. You see? I have not. <gasps> wow. That's yours. Oh, wow. Thank you. Yeah. I, I have never seen the... anybody make it with, with oxtail. Yep. You see that? So they got a mixture of the short rib and the oxtail inside. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh. Wow. That's really good. Okay, I've had this like three times already at this restaurant, but I always feel like I'm discovering it for the first time. Wow, it's like, it's so soft. I've never had this with oxtail. Nobody, I don't think I've ever seen anybody make this with oxtail before at a restaurant. So far, I, I think this is my favorite carby gym that I've had in LA. I would say so. The sauce is a little bit more thick here, so it really clings onto the beef better. Whereas some other restaurants, it's a little more watery. So I'm, I'm actually really impressed. Mmm. Mmm. That sauce is incredible. Wow. Is that not so good? I feel this completes it now. It's like wow. once you have the meat, the veggies, and you have your, your rice, your pop. Mm -hmm. That's how you say in Korean? Pop. Yep. Totally completes the meal. Like, I don't know about you, Esther, but I always feel I need rice with my meal. Oh, I need rice. Absolutely. Always like, need rice. Like that glutinous taste of it is really like completes everything, right? Wow. Yeah. You can really appreciate how good the sauce is by just eating it with plain white rice. So good. Wow, and this is the other big attraction at this restaurant. So Esther, this is the gamjitang, right? Yes, this is gamjitang. It literally translates to potato stew. There's pork neck in there that's braised and it's cooked for a really long time. It's super soft and there's all these vegetables and all these other amazing things in there. I just need to show you how ridiculously tender this meat is. Some places don't make it this tender and it's just like, it literally, it just, it falls right off. That's crazy. Wow, look at that. I can't even pick it up. It's just so soft. Wow. You know what? I'm going to sample it right, right now. Ooh. Super soft. Soup is the most important thing. It's the all base right. of all of this. So. Fill mine up to the max. Ooh. Yep. Just as good as I remember. Wow. That, I feel like if I, if it were a really cold day, which is not today, by the way, <laughs> It's so hot outside. It's almost 90 degrees, I think. <laughs> I know, that's LA for you. I would feel that if I, if this was a really cold day, this is something that would really hit the spot, right? Oh, it's so hearty. Absolutely mm -hmm. meaty. And it's got vegetables in there, noodles, and it's a nice soup. It's not really spicy. It's more flavorful. And by the way, <gasps> this dish is what the restaurant is named after. It is. So I would say this is probably one of two or three main things you should definitely get here. If you get a nice bite with the vegetables, the meat, and rice, and then you just dip it in the soup like that, Ooh. perfect bite. She's showing us a tip. Mm. Okay, so it's like complete now, right? You get a little bit of everything in there, it's so good. Oh, and here's something that's very interesting. There's like a sauce that they give you for the gamjitang. What is this? Yeah, it's like a slightly soy wasabi sauce. You dip your meat in it and it adds a really nice flavor to it. Not a lot of restaurants in LA have this for some reason, but every restaurant in Korea that serves this has it. Mmm. How does it taste so like? Good. It's a slightly sweet, slightly salty soy based with, with a little bit wasabi in there. Oh. It definitely adds more flavor to it. So good, right? I mean, that's not to say you didn't have any flavor to begin with, but you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? It, it adds more. Mm hmm So Esther, you gotta tell us all, what is the must-try dish here at this restaurant? 
The must try dish, surprisingly, obviously the kamja tang is so good, but the kalbichim, the spicy kalbichim with the cheese on it, really took me by surprise. It's so good. The soy with the spice, with the slight sweetness, that sauce. This is the best spicy kalbichim I've had in Koreatown. Mm. Now, what would a Korean food tour be without Korean barbecue? Why not start with Haejang Chon, which is one of the best all you can eat Korean barbecue spots in LA? At $44 a person, it is one of the pricier all you can eat menus. But if you are looking for premium meat quality, then there is a reason that Haejang Chon is the place to go. Go eat it and experience it for yourself. You know the interesting thing about this restaurant is that they're one of very few, especially in All You Can Eat, that uses the stone grill. Yeah, this is the first time ever seeing that. Like, I was like completely shocked. Like they do this a lot, I believe in Korea and a lot of OG spots, but with the stone pot, like you get such different flavors. It, it tastes immaculate. All right, well, I'm gonna find out in just a bit how this thing tastes like. <laughs> Okay, right over here we have like our soy sauce base dip. It's on the sweeter side and it works perfectly for thinly sliced meats, um, typically beef. And then right next to it we have some samjang I love so much, which is bean paste. It's perfect for dipping anything, but I highly recommend eating it with pork. Currently in my hands I have some beef tongue, my favorite beef belly, and everyone's favorite chado, or which is beef brisket. And this like, is usually the good way to start off, right? Yes, the beef trifecta, as I like to say. It's a good way to start your meal nice and clean, and then you get down and dirty. Here we go with the beef brisket. Ooh, I love that sizzling sound. Yeah, it just reminds me of home. <laughs> wow, we're making good progress. Seriously. It cooks very fast, huh? Yeah, that's why when you're going to Korean barbecue and you're starving, Always start with the thin slices because it'll be cooked quickly and um, you'll be ready to eat the next set. So that's a perfect way to go. Mm. Sam, you said that this was your first time at this restaurant? My very first time. And I'm already loving it. <laughs> so I've been to this restaurant only one other time, but it's been about like 10 years-ish. 10 years? Yeah, so it's been a while. Yeah. Wow. It's still the same, right? As it was 10 years ago? I hope so. We'll find <laughs> out. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Why'd yeah. you try it? Let me yeah, know what you think. I'll try it. All right. I'm scared it's gonna be really hot. <laughs> yeah. So I'm lactose intolerant, but you know, for situations like this, you have to just eat it because it's so good. Cheers. Ooh, is it hot? Mmm. Mm hmm. Not too hot, but wow, really good. As soon as it's done, you want to kind of go ahead and eat it quickly, just so that it doesn't um, get too hard. Hot. <laughs> Got the hot part of it. Mmm. <laughs> How's it? It's very liquidy. Mm -hmm. Which is good because I've had it before where it was overcooked and it was so like hard and stringy. But this one's um it's it tastes very fresh. We All start right. off with our beef brisket. Cheers. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Nothing like a good brisket. Nothing like a good brisket. Melts in your mouth. Yeah, as of what I expected from looking at it from the beginning, it is delicious. Absolutely. Mmm. That beef belly is fire. It's fire. Ooh, I'm excited. It tastes just like bacon. Mmm. Mmm. Mm hmm. Wow. Good flavor, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh man, it's it's in there. <laughs> We're gonna place it on our rice paper. Now, I like to go ahead and grab some jalapeno. Also, a piece of garlic. Once you're there, you're gonna go ahead and lift your rice paper and your meat with everything inside. That mm. looks delicious. It's perfect. <laughs> the perfect bite. All right, we got round number two. What do we got here? Ding, ding, ding. Round number two, we have our beef steak that's heavily salted and perfectly salted, might I add. We also have our rib beef fingers. Oh my gosh, that meat, the marbling, it looks mouthwatering. And the last but not least, we have our thinly sliced pork belly. You wanna start easy with your thinly sliced and go with a thicky after. I feel that with steak, um, if you don't know what else to put on it, like salt, it just, it's, it's always classic, right? Yeah. Just plain old salt. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little pepper too if you want to add, but just just salt. That's it. 
You can tell it's pretty tender, right? <laughs> yeah, it's very tender. Oh, so it's now kind of like a stir fry. <laughs> like a teppanyaki restaurant. Like a Korean version. <laughs> oh yeah, hibachi style. Look and at that. It's about medium rare, kind medium of? Medium rare, okay. medium well now. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and dip this into our sesame oil and salt. All right, change it up a little bit. Change it up. Again, this is one of my favorite other sauces because it's simple and the sesame oil brings out so much flavor of the meat. Let's give it a taste. Ooh. Yeah, it, it, it looks tender. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Very tender. Kind of like pillow soft. Yes. That's the way you want it because I've been to all you can eat where it was like very chewy and tough. You know what I'm saying? Mm, this is great. Just like butter, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this one is the uh, beef tongue, right? Beef tongue. And this one is the uh, pork belly, right? Yes, yeah, a thinly sliced pork belly. I love to eat pork belly thinly sliced. The thicker ones are, are amazing, but the thinly sliced, it just hits different, and you'll see why. Let's try something different and put it in the tenjang, the soybean paste. Wow, okay. Wow. I've never had it like this before. Yeah, oh, and also dip it in sesame oil just for extra flavor. Oh yeah, I can't go wrong with that. Put that on top of our radish, and then we're gonna add some more pickled radish on top. This will give it extra flavor. And just pick it up like a taco. Look at that. And enjoy. Wow, all in one bite. Mm -hmm. Let's eat it. Let's eat this. So you like to put it in the sesame oil? Sesame, sesame oil or the tenjang, the yeah. bean paste. Oh yeah, that's and right. Then, so what I like to do is after you go ahead and put this in your mouth, you can either grab a jalapeno or garlic and just chew it all together, it's perfect. All right. Whoa. Mm. That is pretty killer. Mm -hmm. I like it because it's it's thin, so it's like soft and kind of crispy at the same time, mm -hmm. smoky. And I think there's a two hour time limit too. So uh, yeah, eat as fast as you can, guys. <laughs> oh, I can't, I can't get enough of this one. Oh yeah. Let's order three more plates. That's right. <laughs> I feel that the finger meat is almost like a substitute for karbi, the short ribs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I've been to Korean barbecue restaurants where they would say, yeah, the finger meat, it tastes almost like karbi. So just get that. It's the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Like, you know, the imitation version of karbi. Imitation. Oh, not the imitation. <laughs> yeah. And the, um, I know that the oil kind of stays onto the grill. I mean, some people like that and some don't, but I think that it's good. <laughs> yeah. It cooks better. <laughs> All right. Oh. Mm. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. like short rib. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're a little dense. I love it. We got to do it together. Yeah. Ooh. The uh, meats, you can dip it into the brisket sauce. I mean, it doesn't just have to be for the brisket. The the um, sesame oil, mm -hmm. or even the samjang paste. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or you can make something like this. You know what I'm saying? There's multiple ways of doing it. So it's it's like a playground, you know? You yeah. have to play with your food, pretty much. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna end this out with some kimchi fried rice. That's Woo! right, they cook it on the stone grill. What a perfect way to make kimchi fried rice, eh? Yes, sir. And you know, this is gonna cut through all that grease that we've had from the meats, and it is literally perfection. Yes, and they add some cheese oh. on top, too. So this is kind of like a, a fad these days in Koreatown to add cheese on top of everything. I don't think I've ever had pokumbap for fried rice with cheese on top. Whoa. Ever? Uh-uh. Hello? Oh yeah, look at Whoa. that. There's a little fire show to this. That's oh, nice. You put that. You you can hear the sizzle, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. So be careful. It is very hot. Mmm. Oh, okay. It's so, really hot, but good. <laughs> it's kind of what I expected, because mm -hmm. I've had this before at the end of Korean barbecue. Mm -hmm. So it's kimchi fried rice, you know, it's kind of spicy, obviously. And it has the seaweed, so you kind of have like that seaweed uh, taste. Mm -hmm. A lot of umami flavors. That's sure. right, and so much cheese. And here's the thing, even though you're still full, order 
Order the kimchi bokkeumbap. It's so worth it. <laughs> so if you guys are looking for a really good all-you-can-eat Korean barbecue restaurant and you see the line out here, especially at nighttime, mm. you better believe the hype. This is actually a really good spot. So come on down here, Haejangcheon. Of course, there are fancier barbecue options in LA. One to consider is Jongyukjam, which is the most upscale Korean barbecue restaurant in Koreatown. This restaurant is most known for its dry-aged steak menu, which includes the famous $300 tomahawk steak. As you can tell, this is one of those restaurants that you should go to on special occasions. But I would say go for it because this is one of my favorite restaurants in Koreatown. You gotta taste it to believe it. All right, check this out. This is the UK, oh, oh yeah. UK sushi on the menu. So it's pretty much the Korean raw marinated beef, but it is formed into this huge, like a foot long sushi. Ho oh. ho. And this is one of their absolute best things on the menu. This is a seafood pancake. I always like to get these in Korean restaurants and I remember that it was so good last time I tried this here. The grill is heating up. It'll probably take about maybe five to 10 minutes. It's getting there, but in the meantime, I can certainly try some of this other stuff on the table, right? I mean, even the banchan looks pretty good. Like the macaroni. Mmm. It's like sweet, fruity, fruity solid. And I remember last time that I came here, I actually really liked the greens, the salad here. It's because of the dressing. I, it's like some sort of a pear flavored or some sort of a fruity, like a ginger type of dressing. And uh, gaktuki, always a favorite of mine. Well, wow, that's pretty good. It's so crunchy. This appetizer is something you should definitely get here because you're not gonna see the raw beef yuge made like this in too many restaurants around town. So I'm very excited to try this once again. Tastes just like sushi. I'm not kidding, it does. You don't feel like you're eating beef at all. You know, like that very raw beefy taste. Very clean tasting. Almost like eating tuna. That rice has like a sesame type of coating. It's nutty. I do taste the fruitiness of the pears inside. It's a very good appetizer. So I would say if you get something like this, you can just easily share it with a bunch of people at the table. The seafood pancake, always a very good appetizer to have. That thing is soft and crispy at the same time. I think some of the best seafood pancake is when it's crispy all around on the surface, but inside it's like melt in your mouth soft. Wow, that seafood is so fresh too. All that shrimp and all the squid inside and even the crispiness of the green onion. If you guys have never had a seafood pancake before, hamil pajin, it is really one of the tastiest Korean foods that you can have. So get it, whether at a Korean barbecue restaurant or just any other Korean restaurants. Kedanjim, this is quite something. Look how super fluffy it is. It's like a mountain of fluff. About to get started on my Korean barbecue, but this, I don't want it to let sit too long. It's like eating like an egg custard. You know, this is something they have in a lot of Korean barbecue restaurants too. But I think this is the first one I've been to that has all of these different color eggs on top of it. It's like comfort food. And here it is, the show stealer. This is the dry aged Tomok steak. All right, that's Suan, the manager. He's going to begin by trimming off this huge, big, fat steak before putting it on the grill. Wow, look at that marbling on that steak. That's incredible. It almost looks like a piece of butter. Like he's cutting into, yeah, like butter, basically. Woo! Okay, and that piece goes onto the grill. This meat has to be, I would say about an inch and a half thick. Maybe close to two inches actually. That's like one of the biggest blocks of beef I've seen in a Korean barbecue restaurant. I am so excited. Okay, finally, now we're onto the other side. It took about like maybe a minute or two. 
Look at that top. It looks like it's been through a steak oven or something. And I heard that carby tongue is also something that is worth trying here. Wow. Seriously, I think that's one of the best tasting soups I've had in a Korean restaurant. I think the inside is gonna be probably medium rare or something. Oh, yep, I'm right, look at that. It still looks pretty raw in the center. Yeah, I knew it wasn't gonna cook all the way through. All right, flipping action. The other side. So we're making good progress. We're almost getting to the finish. And then with your meal, it comes with the classics like the tenchang jjigae as well as the kimchi jjigae, which means kimchi soup. I guess while waiting for my meat to cook, let's try some of this soup. Wow, that is so good. I remembered it was good last time I had the kimchi jjigae here. Whoa, it's actually kind of spicy. <laughs> it's, a, it's spicier than a lot of the other kimchi jjigae that I had. See, cutting it again, there's a technique to how you make this. And then it goes back onto the grill. And these are the signature dipping sauces for the meats. The left one is the sweet and spicy sauce. That one to the right is some sort of a samjang kind of sauce. And then you have your salt, and this is pretty cool. Chimichurri, oh yeah, just like Argentinian cuisine. Okay, the meat is done. It's cooked to about medium, which is always a perfect way to eat it. Wow. Oh my, that is so delicious. I, I like it because it's, it's so smoky. It's smoky and it has like a very beefy taste. And I'm pretty sure that with the salt, it's definitely going to enhance the flavor of this. Once again, smoky, tender, beefy, just pure beef deliciousness. Uh, yeah, so it looks like, I mean, I guess one person could eat everything if you're a heavy eater, but technically for two people. So yeah, maybe come with somebody special to eat something grand like this. And that big piece of dry aged tomahawk steak also has the rib cap. So just like with the big chunk, he has to also cut this one too. Because this one is fairly thick, so he's cutting it and cooking it just a little bit more. The ribeye cap is finished, and this one I heard is pretty killer. I'm so excited to try it. Okay, that's like the best cut right there. It tastes just like the other one almost, but I feel that this one is even softer, like crispy soft. Wow. By the way, Argentinians make really good steaks as well. You know, with the steak and the chimichurri, Fabulous. So buttery, wow. I can't even describe it. This is really some of the best Korean barbecue you'll ever have in LA. But then again, it is $250, so <laughs> hopefully it is gonna taste very good. But yeah, it does deliver. It's like you get two different flavors on that tomahawk beef and it is fantastic. And then ending it off with this, the marinated short rib, Kyrbi, very classic. They do it so well here, so I'm getting it. Nice, look at how that side has been cooked. That's the way you want your Korean barbecue. See, once it's cut, you see it's kind of raw in the center. Almost looks like seared tuna. You gotta put it back on the grill. Okay, cutting it one more time. Wow, it's still so red in the center. And this is seriously some of the biggest short rib pieces that I've seen. Really, it looks like steak in many ways. Okay, I don't care how big it is. If the meat quality is that good, big thumbs up. Very tender. Very tender and smoky. The marination itself, is actually not super strong. So it's a little bit on the light side, but I would say that the meat itself is super enjoyable. Mm, yeah, they make really good short ribs here. So if you're thinking about getting it, I would say get it. Of course, it's not quite as, as mind-blowing as that huge dry tomahawk steak, but still, it's very good.
So if you are in Los Angeles, specifically in Koreatown, and you're looking for a very upscale Korean barbecue dining experience, this is the ultimate one. I mean, seriously, some people have even said that this is the best Korean barbecue restaurant that you can find in Koreatown because it's really that good. Another one of the best non-barbecue Korean restaurants is Hanum, which serves authentic Korean dishes, much like the ones you'll find in Korea. They have a sizable menu of every kind of Korean food. Much like Soban, Hanum is a restaurant that you should go to if you want to get a taste of Korean cuisine at its finest, and it is really a good place to start. Well, Darlene, we can start with this one. This looks like a very easy to eat item, and my mom makes this all the time, so I know exactly what this is. Oh, really? Yeah, here Does you go. Does your mom make it just like this? Uh, I think the one she makes is kind of smaller because this is okay. more like a thicker, fatter piece. <laughs> Mmm! Mmm, so good. It's like really feel mm. good, huh? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would love to eat this with my breakfast every day. A side of rice. Yeah. Yeah. So if you guys are looking for an egg dish, then I think this is the one you gotta get. This is like so uh, Korean. Yeah. <laughs> Very like home style. There's like layers of the egg delicately folded with green onions. I see some red peppers in there as well. So mm -hmm. really flavorful. Yes. So it doesn't just taste like egg. You know? Yes, exactly. <laughs> so you, you're gonna notice that you don't see too many eggs that are made like this. Mm -hmm. So there's a special technique in how they roll it and yeah. everything that makes it this thick. Mm -hmm. So it's not your typical scrambled eggs from Denny's, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Oh, this one is pretty killer. This is the spicy pork belly with baby octopus stir fried. You see how it's over all of the bean sprouts? On the bottom, I'm telling you, this is really a knockout dish. And guys, I have been here one time before about a couple years ago. I loved it so much, I knew I had to come back to do an episode here. Ooh. Yeah, make sure you get that. plenty of that, that octopus. Mm. It's good, huh? You have no words, huh? I can see why this is your favorite. Mm -hmm. Wow. So flavorful. And I feel like comforted, you know? Yeah. Like I feel like someone just hugged me with a blanket. Is that's, that weird? That's a good way to put it, actually. Yeah. I like that description. Is that weird? <laughs> it's not weird. No, no, I can relate to you. Yeah. Yeah, this one is so great because it has like your seafood and mm -hmm. it also has the thinly sliced pork belly. It's you just know, your sprouts. Bean sprouts. Mm-hmm, mm. -hmm. And you don't notice how it's a little bit spicy, but also kind of sweet too mm -hmm. at the same time. I love those flavor combinations, mm -hmm. sweet and savory, mm -hmm. so good. And I don't know about you, but I'm a rice fan, so I always have to get rice with my meal all the time. And here is one of their big specialties. This is their carby gym, which is the braised short ribs and has potato, carrots, and look at all that cheese on top. Wow, that's beautiful. Try it first, Darlene. Mm. Is it flavorful? I don't even know what to say. It's so tender too, it falls off the bone. And it's like, still has that sweetness, but still savory. Mmm. Right? It's like, it's mm. really meaty. Yeah, super mm -hmm. meaty. Mmm. Yeah, so these are short ribs. They cut them up into these chunks. It's about, it's kind of like a sweet and spicy, right? Mm -hmm. And you cannot forget about the potato, darling. This is really also what makes this dish. You know, I'm excited to try the rice cake, actually. All right, yeah. try the rice cake. The I'll rice try cake. the potato. Let's each try a piece each. Yeah, let's do it. Mmm. Perfect texture. Is it good, Darlene? Perfect texture. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. How's yep. your potato? I can tell she's enjoying it. How's your potato? <laughs> you know, the potato. Yeah, it's good. You know, it's just like potato. <laughs> Very soft. Yeah, so this is this Carby Gym. Is something you'll find in a lot of Korean restaurants. It's a very popular beef dish. It is a little bit expensive, but it's really good for sharing. So get it here. 
And this is one of their house specialties as well. It's uh, mudum jeon, which is Korean seafood, meat, vegetable, pancakes. So it's basically a combination of a lot of jeons in here. And this one is one of their house specialties because you're not gonna find the presentation like this in too many restaurants in mm. Koreatown. So there's vegetables, there's seafood, you pick whatever you want. I think I'm gonna go with the big one first. Big one, yeah. oh, you were looking at that, weren't yeah. you? Oh, it's kind of heavy. I know. You really pack it for sure. So yeah. You dip it in the sauce. Mm-hmm. There's a lot going on in here. We have green onion. I think that's um, imitation crab. There's some kind of meat. I can't figure figure out what it is yet. Well, I see the imitation crab in there for sure. Yeah. It's I mean, good, isn't it? I feel like it's a similar batter that they use for Korean pancakes, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. it's not necessarily tempura where you get that crispy. super crispy, mm -hmm. light, and airy. You get more of a, I would say, I wouldn't say it's heavy, you know, yeah. but it's, uh, like you said, more eggy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm, good, good stuff. Though. Oh, yeah. And there's a lot of things in there, like meats, vegetables, seafood. You should get oh, it. I didn't realize what that was, and then I just... I oh, this one. Good. It's like anchovy. Yeah, with peanut. It's good. Mm-hmm. It's like salty. It has like a bite to it. Mm-hmm. Mm. I like that. We haven't had the, the banchan, the side dishes this whole yeah, time. I forgot about it. Yeah. What would a meal be without kimchi? Oh, you're right. Here, let me chase you. <laughs> wow, okay. Thank you. <laughs> and if you guys like chicken, they also have this traditional Korean food, which is called the dakdori tang, which is spicy whole chicken and potato stew. Yeah, you got chunks of chicken marinated with a sauce with a lot of veggies potatoes so it's basically like a chicken hot pot wow this is amazing yeah it's like a whole drumstick look at this uh-huh look at our drums oh yeah that's right mm. Mm. wow i love chicken that is so soft and it just falls off the bone. Look at you, 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 can't, you can't even stop. You yeah. couldn't even stop. That's good. Yeah, you couldn't even stop. <laughs> He's on his second one now. Oh yeah. So it's basically like uh, spicy chicken, just yeah. like the Super menu good. says. This dish is kind of like the Carby Gym, but like a chicken version mm -hmm. of it, I would say. So if you guys are not into beef, then yeah, get the chicken one. It's yeah. this whole... Mm, exactly. There's so many other good things on the menu I wanted to try, but we only have so much space, but there are actually a lot of other good things on the menu. We took up this entire table, and technically this is a table for six. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's only two of us. Only two, yeah. <laughs> And this one is the spicy raw marinated crab. You heard that, raw. It is a centuries old Korean dish. This is something that I heard everybody gets here. So, oh yeah, we're gonna get it too. This pair is really good with the rice. Oh, yes, it it's squirting out. There we go. That looks so right. fresh. <laughs> All the juice. Look how right. fun that is. Oh yeah, and it's raw. You see that raw and you just eat it like this. Yummy. I'm gonna eat the ones that they already made. Please do. <laughs> mm. Mm. Very creamy. Mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting that. Um, obviously, my first time trying this. Uh huh. I thought it was gonna give that more of a sashimi kind of texture, mm -hmm. but this is super creamy. It's a very nice surprise. You got it. Ready? Uh huh. Mmm. <laughs> oh my mom. Mm. You'll get it. It's so much better like this, though. Oh really? Mm -hmm. You have to do it. You have to do it the dirty way. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty fun. It's like a mouthful, huh? <laughs> so has it, so has this been kind of what you expected? No, no, definitely out of this world. Out of this world for sure. Oh, I did my job yeah. well. <laughs> well, what was your favorite out of all of them? I know there were so many good ones, right? I will have to say this dish right here. Ooh, you're talking about the octopus one with the pork, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
So it's just like, it has a combination of best of both worlds. You have your seafood and both meat at the same time. And you know, surprisingly, I'm not a huge fan of pork, but I really like this a lot. Wow. Yeah. You got a lot of great foods that you can choose from. So if you don't know what else to get, just get what we got and you're gonna really yeah. get a taste of Korea. Just like what this restaurant motto is. Yeah. If you are more west of Koreatown, then there is MGD Korean Barbecue, which is Hollywood's first and only Korean barbecue. It is an all-you-can-eat night spot. For $39.99, you get about 50 choices of appetizers and meats. Along with drinks on the menu, you have the full dining experience in Hollywood. And did I mention that they do have a pretty awesome tomahawk steak on the menu? You see, Hannah, I wasn't playing around <laughs> no, when I you told weren't. you we're gonna eat some good stuff. This, this is, the, is huge. Yes, this is their $180 <laughs> Tomahawk steak, the most expensive thing on the menu. Look how thick that thing is. That is oh, thick. yeah. And it looks like it comes with some macaroni, some uh, spinach, and some kimchi. Okay. It's like, where do we even begin? Look That's at all what this I was food. gonna say. What, what, what's calling your name first? Where are you thinking of going with this first? All right, let's see. All right. You know what I wanna do? Maybe we can start off with a big bang and we can try um, that steak right yeah, let's, there. Yeah, let's try the steak first. All Why right. Not? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Doesn't that look oh so amazing? Gosh, that looks fantastic. Woo. All right. So that is cooked to about medium rare, I believe. But then since it's on the stone, it will cook just a little bit more. Really looks like something out of a steakhouse. It huh? really, really does. <laughs> So it looks like the dipping sauces for today is the brisket sauce. It's kind of dark, hard to see, but to the left. And then we have salt and pepper, and that is the garlic sauce. Yum. So I want to let you know, this is not a typical Korean barbecue choice. Okay. This is, I think, the first time I've actually seen it in an all-you-can-eat Korean barbecue. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, this isn't part of the all-you-can-eat menu. Let me just tell you that. But mm -hmm. it's there, and we're going to go all out with it. Yep. So, yeah, let's do it. All right. Mmm. Whoa. Oh, that, that is so good. Mm -hmm. It like melts in your mouth. So juicy. It is so juicy. This is not a dry steak. Well, I would hope so. We're paying $180 <laughs> for it. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Mmm. That is so good. It's like crispy on top, too. Very. This is fun for me because I usually don't eat tomahawk steaks, like I said, in all you can eat. Yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of an elevated experience, you would say. Definitely. And these are some of the popular appetizers that you can get. We got the Hot Cheetos Tots. Never seen anything like that before. That is crazy. I know. And even this one, I don't think you've seen this one before. A kimchi never. tots, right? I've, ne I've never had a kimchi tot. I'm excited to try that. Oh, this is like brilliant East meets West right here. Absolutely. I am a tot girl through and through, so I'm excited. This looks pretty good. That Korean so fried good. chicken. I know it does, doesn't it? It looks good. It looks crispy, and I love fried chicken. Yeah, and then there's also this other flavor here. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, what, sweet and spicy chicken. Yep. <laughs> I so remember these kimchi tots when I was at the Northridge location, which I was at about a year ago. Seriously, this is some of the best tots you'll ever eat. Oh, I'm excited. I yeah. love tater tots. Okay, I'm just going to go. Go for it. So it has like uh, kimchi on top. I think it has a spicy mayo. Mm. That is really good. This is nice because there's enough spice for somebody who likes spicy, mm -hmm. but for somebody who doesn't do spicy too, too often, it's still very doable too. Oh yeah. They're really good. They're really crispy tots. This is as now, equally fascinating. Now she said these are... Hot Cheetos. Hot Cheetos. That is so funny. Okay, okay so this is definitely more um, go. Western or American. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds good. Mm. Tastes just like Hot Cheetos. It really does. It's like the Hot Cheeto complements the top. They complement each other very well. Oh yeah. It's a good mixture. I like that. It is. I don't usually find these in other Korean barbecue restaurants. So this is a thing that's actually very special to this restaurant. Mm -hmm. So if you guys are looking for a really good appetizer to try on the menu, this one, hot Cheetos tots or, or kimchi. kimchi tots. This is the chato beef brisket, which you should always start out with because it is unmarinated, very clean tasting, and very thin, very fast to cook. 
And this one is the LA Carby. This is limited to one per customer. Yes, these are short ribs. You should definitely get them when you go to any Korean barbecue restaurant. And that right there is the beef belly. Yeah, this is like the beef version of bacon. Have you ever had this before, Hannah? I've never had that before. I'm excited though, because I do love bacon. Oh, you'll taste it, you'll see. Yeah. Have you tried Korean fried chicken before? I've never, but I grew up in the South and I do love fried chicken. So I'm excited to try it. I this. think you're gonna like this one too. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -hmm. Crunchy and it's like sweet, right? Definitely. So it's like a soy sauce garlic flavored. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, very popular here, you gotta get it. And one of the things that this restaurant is also known for are drinks and they have these kind of like party pouches. So I got like a kind of like a blue flavor. Mm -hmm. And this one is strawberry, right? This one's strawberry. Mm -hmm. And these are virgin, but you can also get them in alcoholic form too. Yeah, I wanna see what it tastes like. Oh. oh. Okay. Oh, and look, it lights up as well. <laughs> so oh, no way. I think yours, does yours light up? I think they so. They have a little like light kind of, right? thing in it. Yeah, okay. It is a party pouch. <laughs> it is. Oh, yeah. How does yours taste? Almost tastes like uh, drinking a uh, blue soda. Oh, okay. I can't describe what that blue tastes like, mm -hmm. but I'm pretty sure you can describe what this one tastes this like, This one, right? it, it's strawberry and it very much tastes like strawberry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, let's get this party started. I love that you get to like be your own chef. Too, you know? Oh yeah, it's definitely. Okay. So this goes into the brisket sauce. Okay. Right there. Okay. Mmm. Mm. That is very good. So like I said, Hannah, the beef brisket is actually something that traditionally you start off with in the very beginning because it's not marinated. It's thin, mm -hmm. it's very fast to cook. So you would progress from the non-marinated to the marinated heavier meats later. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. The garlic the sauce. Garlic sauce. I'm a. I love garlic. All right, like let's, do let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, hmm. oh, I like that. <laughs> that is rocking. <laughs> you gotta admit, that's pretty good, huh? Mm -hmm. I love it. Are you having a fun time, Hannah? I am having such a good time. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I think this is the first time at a Korean barbecue. Believe mm -hmm. it or not. You're not going to find too many restaurants that has Korean barbecue tacos, especially all you can eat. So yes, they give you these tortillas and then it comes with the salsa and all the garnishments and you cook it on right here. Let's go. Just ahead. like that. Oh yeah. In there. Yep. Okay. Grilling some tortillas. Put some meat in there. There we go. Just like that. Get Any way that. you want. Yep. Put You're doing good. Like and uh, my favorite type of salsa, Ooh. which is salsa verde, and there you go, look at that. That looks so good. That looks so good. How is it? That is so good. I love the fact that you can use the meat that you are already making, combine it in the taco, it is so good. So Hannah is dressing up my taco, and you see mine has the Cheetos tot in there. Uh-huh, okay. Yeah, you gotta eat it with the potato tots, I'm telling you. It's so good. Mm -hmm. Totally forgot about the short rib. Oh, we cannot leave here without trying this. Hannah, you gotta try this one. I am excited for the short rib. Rightfully so. Oh, this thing cooks pretty fast. That, I, yeah, okay. Very nice. Nice color. So it looks like it's done. So All you're right. gonna try it. Here Thank you go. You. And this one is, uh, whenever I go to Korean barbecue, it's my favorite thing to eat. Mmm. 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 You were telling me this is like a marinade on it, right? Mm -hmm. It's so good. If you like soy sauce, if you like salty, I'm a salty girl. Through and through, I love it. Yeah. And you notice there's the sweetness in mm -hmm. it too, right? Mm -hmm. Sweet meat. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're used to that, but... It's so good. Oh, yeah. This is cooked so well, too. Now, there's a reason why this is limited to one per customer, because it's a very expensive cut of meat. Okay. Everything else is all you can eat, so this is limited to one per customer. But whenever you see that, you gotta take advantage of it because you want to get your money's worth, right? Well, and also it's like, if it's limited one per customer, there's that exclusivity factor that you don't want to miss out on. So Hannah, yes, you gotta try it with the cheese. And I, I love cheese. Okay. So this oh. is, oh, you see the corn? 
Yes. I highly recommend. <laughs> I can tell you really like it. I really do like it. <laughs> There's also something that's very popular on the menu. It's the kimchi fried rice. You see you got this egg in the bottom and then you have that egg on top. That's the kimchi fried rice. But look at this, Hannah. You see the egg yolk? Mm-hmm. Ooh. 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 Oh, look at that. Isn't that a shot? That is a shot. Oh, yeah. Oh, that looks so good. You are going to eat that. Okay. <laughs> Mmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think I got a lot of yolk in mine. I tasted. Did you? I got a lot of the egg white. <laughs> Tell me, honestly, have you ever had fried rice with egg yolk on top of it? You know, I don't think I have. And I like the combination together, mm -hmm. too. Edwin here is a really awesome server, so when you're here, you gotta look out for this guy. He's gonna take the best care of you, right? Absolutely. absolutely. One of my best discoveries in Koreatown is this other restaurant called Liga, which always has a long line and for good reason. They house make their buckwheat noodles and is most known for its excellent soup dishes. So if you guys like soups, noodles, and dumplings, Liga is the real deal. And they do also have some pretty killer beef dishes that you have to try when you come here. What did I tell you? What a menu. They have so many of these soups too. The salong tang is a specialty here, so obviously I'm going to get that. And if you are a pretty high roller, you want to show at your table, Flaming Carby Jim. Oh yeah. All right guys, so this is Tommy. He's the owner of Liga. All right. He works here in the kitchen and he's going to show us some awesome stuff. So Liga has this noodle making machine in the kitchen and this is where they make all of their fresh naengmyeon. This machine is imported from Korea and I heard it costs a lot of money. We're talking about like $30,000. But this is the reason why customers come here because they fresh make this every day in the kitchen so that you can get some of the most rockin' naengmyeon buckwheat noodles that you can find in Koreatown. And there it goes, you see that? It pushes us down, gets it into that very fine Nengmen noodle shape. And I think that is the boiling water. See, it's very fast. It takes only 10, 15 seconds and it's done. Yeah, you gotta time it correctly. And then they wash it in the cold water so that you can cool it down. And this is important because you don't want the noodles to continue to cook. You want this noodles perfect. Those noodles are so elastic. I mean, it looks like they can really stretch. So that means when you eat this, uh, it's a good idea to have some scissors to cut this up, just so you can chew it a little better. Those are some toppings. Looks like we got some bean sprouts. And I think that's uh, brisket maybe? Brisket and flank. Brisket and flank, all right. Oh yeah, that's the hot broth. They got their house special recipe. It's like a beef beef bone broth? Yeah. All right, that's always so good. And they also have the spicy one too. And I think that's sesame oil inside. Chili paste. Now this is something you don't find in too many Korean restaurants. This is a dumpling steaming machine. So when you order the mandu, they place it in here, they steam it for a certain amount of time, and it is ready to go. So based on what I'm seeing, the food looks very authentic, of course. It looks high quality, it looks clean, and it looks like they put a lot of care into making these dishes. So I know, I'm at the right place today. Ooh, so exciting. So this is the first one. This is the garbi tang. So on the menu, it's number 13, wang garbi tang, which is beef short rib soup. And look at all those green onions on top. It's still boiling. I love it. All right, and here's another one of their best sellers. So Stephanie, what is this one? This is the gogi mandu with beef, pork, and vegetables. Oh yeah, seven pieces. Yeah, it looks really good. Mm-hmm. So they have uh, two kinds. So this is the mixed uh, protein one, but then they also have the kimchi one too, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. I like both of them. Okay. Yeah, so just whatever your preference is. Cheers. Oh, I gotta dip some oh. too. <laughs> All cheers. right, cheers to that. Mmm. Mm. Really flavorful. Oh yeah. I think that that sauce really does add like a very I nice know, I love it. touch to it. This isn't a mandu house, but they do have really good mandu here. Yeah, they really do. So you're not gonna go wrong with it here. 
This carby tongue is one of the specialties here. They do have salong tongue too, but she's been telling me because yeah. of this. It's so good. Yeah. The meat just falls off the bone. You gotta try it. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it right now. Let's do it. Do it. Let's try it. Oh. Mm, so good. I just want to fall asleep now. I know. You know, I feel like this is such a good soup to eat if, if it's like a really cold day. Yeah. Don't you feel like just eating this at home or something? I mean, it's really comforting and it tastes like liquid meat. I don't know, can I say that? No. It's like liquefied meat, it's so good. See, it's mm. kind of like pho broth in the sense that it's not like a thick, very like spice infused right. broth. It's so thin, but it has so much flavor, you know what I'm it's saying? It's bone broth and they cook it for a really long time. Oh yeah. To get all the flavor in there. This is like mom's home cooking. Rib cheers. Rip cheers. You see that right there? All right. Mm. Oh, wow. So good, right? This thing just falls right off the bone. You see this? Mm -hmm. You yeah. seeing this, guys? This is one of the best beef ribs I've had in a carby tongue. No, I think so too. Oh, yeah. Like, not just, not only does it really fall right off the bone, but it's tender, it's full of flavor. You know, I've had beef ribs before where it's like when you bite into it, it just really Yeah, or like chewy or stringy. Yeah. No, it's just tender and perfect. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. So here are the noodles. The main attraction here. So this is the bibim ningmian. This is the spicy one. The cold buckwheat noodle in their special house spicy sauce with egg. And it looks like we got some of that brisket on top too. So what do we got here, Stephanie? This is the mul ningmian the cold noodles, buckwheat noodles, they make here in-house. Looks so good. The broth is slushy and really cold and refreshing. Oh, I like your description. And it is a good idea that you cut this because these noodles are very, uh, how do you say, it stretches. It's hard to break apart with your teeth, so yeah. Mm. Mm. Oh, wow. Mm. Oh, wow. And those noodles are so chewy. It is. You know, mine is just a little bit spicy and uh, it's it's kind of like fruity sweet too. <laughs> this is so fun. I don't think I've ever done that before in a Korean restaurant. <laughs> like cut it like that. Mmm. 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 Mm. The sauce on this one is so good. It looks spicier than it is. Like it's really bright red, but it's not that spicy. It's yeah. Because it's a little sweet, like you were saying. You know what I notice about these noodles is that they kind of have like a a little bit of a crunchiness to it when you they bite do. into it. Yeah. I mean, that's not to say it's like, you know, eating like a cracker, but it just has like a really nice bite to it, like al dente. Al dente. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mmm. Mm. Really tender. Oh yeah, there, there, there are some meats in there as well, so not just noodles. But man, this is like... So good. It is. This is addicting, actually. Mm -hmm. And you can also add some extra vinegar. And this is like um, like hot mustard oil. That's what we forgot. Yeah. I knew something was missing. Okay. Should we, we should, go? Should we yeah, do it? Yeah, we should okay. have done it in the beginning. Come I agree. on, Stephanie. Stephanie, I'm come sorry. on. <laughs> All right. See, that's going to change everything. That's I'm telling a whole you. That's a new flavor now. Oh, yeah. Let's try it now. Mm. Wow, look at that. She's such a, such a pretty eater, isn't she? Man, that's good. Did it change the flavor? Yeah, now it's much more tangy. And that hot mustard, it's not too mustardy, but it's really good. Oh man, this one I heard is really an attraction here. This is the prime suk galbi gui, which is charcoal broiled soy marinated prime beef short ribs. All right, so here is a big one that feeds about two to three people according to the menu. Or just me. Just you, yep, <laughs> yep. She, she loves to eat too, you know what I'm saying? I'll share with you, Steve, it's okay. Just for today, that's right. <laughs> they use the same uh, short rib grade as a lot of the top Korean barbecue restaurants. That's right. In LA. I'm so excited to try this. All right. Oh. Mm. That tastes just like something out of a really good Korean barbecue restaurant. Mm. I'm, I'm not usually so excited about eating mm. Korean short ribs outside of a barbecue restaurant, but I think today changed my mind about it. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. Whew. 
Oh, they're playing some good music too, you know what I'm saying? See, she's really going at it. <laughs> like with bone and all. That's the way you gotta do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I think this is probably the best Korean short ribs I've had outside of a Korean barbecue restaurant. I agree. Wow, this is such a show stealer. I didn't even expect this because I came eat wanting the noodles and the soups, but I could come back just to eat this one. I think everything's been really good. This has been one of the biggest Korean surprises to me this year. It's so good, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I just liked, you know, like every dish here. Like, what was your favorite? Um, gee, everything was really good, but I think the galbi tang is my favorite because... Yes. Yeah. Clearly, these bones, these ribs, amazing. Oh, man. You know, I really like that carby tongue, too. I would totally get it again. But you know what was the biggest surprise to me was I think it was this one right here. So good, right? I just didn't expect that the quality of the meat was going to be like this top notch. It's really tender, and I like the sauce. Absolutely. Everything about it is so good. It's like the sauce is great. The meat is so good it's so good you just got to try it guys you really see good. she can't stop eating no, it right here <laughs> so okay, all right right it. here so yes right. come say hi to him he's gonna take really good care of you <laughs> it's worth mentioning that you can also find korean seafood barbecue in koreatown burning shell which is a popular barbecue restaurant that specializes in seafood they have everything from clams to lobsters so if you are more of a seafood barbecue type of person or you've never tried it before, then Burning Shell is my highest recommendation. It's quite an experience. You immediately notice that there's some sort of a Pirate's Cove pirate ship theme to it. So this restaurant definitely has personality. Burning Shell has been here for about a year and a half, so they're still a fairly new Korean barbecue restaurant and they specialize in seafood barbecue. Oh, I know I'm gonna have a good time here today. Since this is a seafood restaurant, obviously they're gonna have a lot of seafoods on the menu, you see that? Everything from the sea eel to live lobster and octopus, and yes, they have the seafood tank here. But then if you're coming with a group, I think you should get one of these large seafood sets. I'm gonna get the captain set. For $200, you get a lot of things, and I'm gonna show all of this to you in just a bit. It's pretty cool. And look at all this food that comes with the captain set. In fact, it comes with all the sets. You see, we got the steam deck right there, nice and fluffy. I love that dome on top. And then we have this one, which is spicy rice cakes, uh, dokboki. And that one is like some sort of a shrimp tempura. And then this is a vegetable Korean pancake and some cheese corn. And this comes with the meal too. On the menu, they call this the mulwe, which is Korean ceviche. I think it's some sort of a seafood noodle soup. There's sashimi in there. Uh, looks like there's shrimp, uh, noodles, a lot of seaweed, jalapeno, just a lot of stuff going on. I always thought that when you go to an Asian restaurant, the noodles uh, come all the way at the end when you're about to get full. Maybe that's more of a Japanese thing, but it's okay. I'll eat some of it in the beginning. It's cold noodles. Oh, it's pretty icy. Yeah, Korean cuisine makes really good cold noodles. And this one is a little bit spicy. And like I said, it is a sashimi noodle dish. So you're gonna find pieces like tilapia in there. Now I feel like I'm eating a sushi noodle dish. As you can tell, this is a big meal. You should definitely come with more than one person. Mmm. Okay, I'm always into that, that egg souffle. The kerajim. And this one has scallops inside. Now that's the first time I've ever seen seafood in a kerajim. This is so cool. Oh yeah, this corn, you'll find it in a lot of Korean restaurants too, especially uh, Korean pubs. Mmm, cheesy. It's like the perfect snack in a Korean restaurant or a cafe. Perfect chewiness and it's spicy and sweet at the same time. Be careful not to get way too full off of this because remember, you still got the seafood. 
So this is the entire captain's set, which is top of the line on the menu. This easily feeds about three to four, if not five people. So on the top, we got some abalone that's alive. Do you see it's moving? It's moving, guys. Oh, oh boy, oh, that's crazy. I don't think I've ever seen that before with all these bell peppers and onions sprinkled all over. And then when you take the elevator down, we have some scallops with cheese on it, as well as some shrimp. And then down here, we got some manila clams. Look how big they are. It's pretty cool, huh? And then here, uh, mussels. And then down here, this is oyster, obviously. And that is hagfish. Kind of looks like eel, huh? And then we got octopus right here. And this one, I believe, is spicy. It looks pretty spicy. So we have some squid right here. And this is the butter marinated scallop. This is part of the $200 meal that I got today, prefix menu, but you can also order this separately too if you just want the lobster. And remember, it is fresh, straight out of the tank. And even the dipping sauces are interesting. The left one is the Thai seafood sauce. All right, we got some Thai influences here, as well as the Korean spicy sauce to the right. We're all set. So as you can see, guys, after the lobster is presented in that chest, they steam it in the back in the kitchen and then they will cut it up for you, ready to be served, just like that. So this one, if you get it separately, it's $50, but it does come with the captain set, so that is another reason why you should get it. This lobster came straight out of the tank, so obviously it's gonna taste really good, right? Ooh, I can already feel it. It feels so fresh. Like, you know, when you squeeze it, ooh, how very nice. So this one you can eat by itself, or you can dip it into the sauce. Maybe I'll put it into this Thai sauce, the Thai seafood sauce. Mmm. Whoa. That tastes just like a seafood that came out of a Thai restaurant. I'm not kidding. Now I feel like I just changed cuisines. That is so good. I feel that if they serve this in a Thai restaurant with this exact sauce, it will be a hit on the menu. You could also eat this with butter too, or you could eat it by itself. But man, this lobster is so fresh. Mmm. You even have the claws. They crack everything for you. Isn't that so cool? Mmm. Wow. Okay, no complaints about the lobsters. It's pretty good stuff. You should definitely get it. But then again, if you order the captain set, it's gonna come with it. So you should be happy. Wow, look at that. They're putting a potato and a sweet potato in there. It's almost like roasting some potatoes at a campfire site. And there it goes. So it looks like these clams cook pretty quickly because they're popping open. I mean, literally like popping open and flipping on the grill. Oh, I love the smell. So toasty. And FYI, they do give you these gloves because it's gonna protect your hands from burning because you have to pick up these shells, right? And they are very hot when it comes off the grill. So juicy fresh. Very juicy, very soft too. And just to let you know, the side is not that hot. All the heat is in the center, so you don't have to worry about it burning if it kind of sits on the side. You see, the cheese would have melted by now. What did I tell you? So it looks like the abalone takes a while to cook. It's getting there. So after it cooks thoroughly, then we can cut it up. So I suppose with all the seafood, you could eat it by itself, or you could dip it in the sauce, but I wanna see the natural flavor of it. That is so fresh. It's very tender, so it's not overly uh, chewy as in it's rubbery. You know that's a pretty bad abalone, but this one, it's, it's, it's a little chewy, but then it kind of melts in your mouth at the same time. That's pretty cool. Yeah, let me try it with some uh, of that Thai sauce again. Okay, the Thai sauce is the way to go, everything. Just letting you know. The mussels are next. All right, so once you put it in the center, that means it's their turn. And I wanna stress again, keep your gloves on because even with the gloves on, you can feel that heat just going through the gloves. Mm. 
Right, so far everything I've been trying, it's good. It's all fresh and it's barbecued. I mean, it's the perfect combination. And the scallops are next. All right, look at all that cheese that's gonna melt on it. Looks like we got a fire show too. Gotta torch the cheese on top of the scallop. Okay, I think this might be the first time I've had cheese with scallop. Mmm. I mean, scallop's always good. Even when she's on top of it, it, tastes great. So I think with the scallop, it tastes good by itself, but hey, if you wanna enhance it with some more Thai sauce or butter, chili sauce, go right on ahead because this is pretty much your meal. Look at that, the hagfish is like sliding and crawling all over the top of this. <laughs> yeah, that's the way it appears, but it's just cooking. It's shriveling up. Ooh, it's so smoky. All of this is for the hagfish, so when they grill it, you're going to wrap it up, and I'm gonna show you in just a minute. That is the perilla leaf, and some jalapenos, onions, sesame oil, and the Korean samjang, which is uh, bean paste. You don't have to worry about messing up cooking the food. You don't do it because the servers will do it for you. So they're going to grill it, they're gonna cut it, they're gonna do all the flame torching show as well. So this is really all around good experience. So this is how you make your hagfish. You dip it in the sesame oil, just like that, and right on top of the perilla leaf. Okay, how about some jalapeno and some garlic, some onion, some of the bean paste right on top. And you'll see something very similar when you go to the beef Korean barbecue restaurants too. You wrap it up in the rice paper and you can fill it up with pretty much whatever you want. Mmm. See, what I like about that wrap is that you have so much flavor going on. You have the soybean paste in there, you have the crunchiness of the fish as well as the perilla leaf, the mintiness of it, a little bit spicy, sesame flavored, explosion of flavor. So you could eat the hagfish by itself, but definitely wrap it in the wrap because that's really what's gonna give it a complete experience. You know what, let me try the hagfish by itself. I wanna see what this tastes like. Mm. I was right. Very crunchy. Almost like eating an octopus or a squid. I think those are the oysters, okay along with those huge clams on top. You see, we're making good progress towards the end. And the oysters, I heard, you have to really be careful because this thing is super hot. I can feel it. Mm. Wow, so melt in your mouth. And like I said, you could put in any sauce, Thai, Spicy butter. They're all so good. Even this one's so fresh. This is really a cool restaurant because in Korea, they have a lot of these uh, barbecue seafood restaurants. Maybe with a little different variety, but this pretty much captures it. So yeah, so far I can tell this is a restaurant you definitely need to check out in LA. And that one is the squid. Wow, this is really like a course meal. I mean, just like one after another, it's pretty crazy. Man, and that is the baby octopus right there. I haven't had a barbecue shrimp in a long time and it tastes so good. I mean, I like shrimp made anyway, steamed or fried, but barbecue, so toasty. I just love that taste. No matter what sauces you put on it, you're really gonna enjoy the natural flavor of the seafood itself. Mm. So good, so good. So you're really savoring every bite here because especially if you order that huge combo, it's all gonna be cooked almost like a coarse meal and served uh, almost like one or two at a time so that you can really enjoy every seafood selection you get on here. Look at that butter scallop soup just boiling. So yes, this has to come to a boil before you eat it. So 
The potato is going to be pretty much raw, but then about 30 minutes later-ish, this is what it becomes. It's all nice and cooked now. I have never seen a scallop soup like this before. In fact, I don't think I've ever had any scallop soup in any kind of restaurant before. This is pretty cool. Oh. It's not even an overpowering butter flavor. It's like so nice tasting all around. Very light. All right, so this is another one of the surprises you can find here at Burning Shell. Two kinds of potatoes, isn't that pretty cool? Sweet potato in Korean koguma. Ah, that's so good. Well, I mean, the regular potato is good in its own way, especially if you put that butter in. I bet it will taste really awesome. But sweet potato, you can certainly eat it by itself. This one does not come with the captain set, but I ordered it separately because I want to try the eel here. And eel barbecue is a very big popular thing in Korean cuisine. So yes, this is the uh, sea eel, Anago, $55 on the menu. How beautiful. And it comes with a dipping sauce. The left one is the uh, eel sauce, just like you'll find in a lot of sushi restaurants. Some shaved uh, ginger. And that one is a house-made sauce. Look at that. More torching action for the eel, uh-huh. What did I tell you? It's quite a show here, huh? So there's a way you eat the eel as well. The pickled radish goes right on top of that leaf. Oh yeah, I got some onions and jalapeno and some more of that paste, which is so important because it adds a lot of flavor to it. And this is a nice little tip. You can put some of that sliced ginger along with the eel sauce on top. Mmm. Mmm. Wow, that eel tastes like a very tender fish. Now, I wouldn't say that it's as soft as what you would have in a sushi restaurant, but still, it tastes fabulous. Definitely wrap it up in there because all of that combines to give it a very delicious, sweet, minty, crunchy flavor all going on at the same time. I'm serious, you can even just get the eel, do that, and that could be your whole meal. I mean, people come here just to eat the eel because you don't find this in too many Korean barbecue restaurants around town. This is definitely the seafood barbecue destination in Los Angeles. I mean, this is just so cool. You have so much food that you get, especially if you order the captain set. Wow, my mind is blown. I don't think I've eaten so much barbecue seafood in my whole life, but you get it, every single kind of it. So make the drive out here to Koreatown, come to Burning Shell, and just get what I got because these are some of the best, most popular things on the menu. You're gonna have a really rocking time. I mean, this five-star restaurant, definitely. Just like it says on Yelp. Well, there you have it my 200 hour journey into the amazing food scene in Los Angeles. Have you guys been to any of these Korean food spots? Drop that comment because I would love to hear your stories and your suggestions. Well, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of this video. You guys are amazing and I'll see you all in the next food adventure.